Bonjour YouTube, welcome back to our channel. Today we are in Normandy, Dieppe. On est là. Now we are waiting for the train. In 40 minutes we will depart. I never been to Dieppe. We couldn't find so many videos on YouTube either. Hopefully we will make a good one. Well obviously we're gonna make a nice one. We always do. We got our coffees. Well, Sinana's having hot chocolate and I'm having a coffee. I'm having latte. Are you having latte? Yeah. Oh, he's having latte. over in Rouen. We will arrive in Dieppe in 40 minutes, I believe. We've arrived to Dieppe and uh, it's a port town, as you can see. We are now gonna look and find something to eat because we are really hungry. We haven't had breakfast yet. Well, I did have a croissant, but that doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't count for it doesn't count for me because it was really early and really really it was really small anyway we are walking around so far quiet and nice but also we are here on friday so uh should be actually quite busy no yeah friday it's, yeah it's almost park ah it's almost easter yes yeah Where we are actually. I hope it's a nice apartment. So we've arrived to our Airbnb and I'm starting to get angry because I can't I can't operate this. It keeps on flashing. I figured it out, hopefully. I just prepared for Sinan hot chocolate as well. Look how much waste this shit brings. This is all plastic. This is crazy. Anyway, I prepared hot chocolate for Sinan. I hope he enjoys it. My coffee is... <laughs> so we will just stay here a bit and we will just take some rest and then we will start discovering this small town. So this is Port de Tourelle. It was built in the 11th century and from the 15th to 19th century it was actually used as a prison. This is the only gate port of the 7th gates that were around the app that remains to our day. I just learned that Louis XIV sent more than 700 women to Canada, Quebec to populate the country. Canada back then was called Nouvelle France, New France. And so just to increase the population, the king sent 700 women. And those women were called daughters of king. They have a good responsibility to increase the population. I don't know, I find it very strange <laughs> and funny at the same time. So, yeah. <laughs> Le Chateau de Dieppe is a former fortified castle built from 1188, destroyed in 1195, and essentially rebuilt in the 15th century. The exact origin of the chateau is confusing. It was certainly built by Henry II Plantagenet, then Richard Coeur de Lyon, and destroyed by Philippe Auguste in 1195. The death of the regent Bedford, John of Lancaster, on September 14, 1435, gave the Normans the opportunity to revolt. On October 28th, a gang leader, Charles de Marais, stormed the city and freed it from the English occupation. The peasants rose up, leading to the liberation of Fécamp and Arfleur. An English response followed. The peasants were massacred and the towns taken over with the exception of Arfleur, 
which resisted until 1447, and in Dieppe, its governor de Marais obtained authorization to enlarge the place and rebuild a powerful fortress. Once peace returned, the fortress served as a residence for governors who reinforced it throughout the 16th and 17th centuries. In 1650, the Duchess of Longueville, Anne Genevieve de Bourbon Conde, wife of the Duke of Orléans, gathered the rebellious lords at the chateau, trying in vain to raise Normandy before having to bend before the royal army. From 1870, the city became an important seaside and tourist destination. In 1903, the city bought the building. So one thing needs to be added is that this chateau changed and if evolved with centuries. You can see different type of architecture, you can see different materials are being used on the inside, like in the courtyard and on the outside you see the towers, you see the walls, they're all different, you know, and that's one of the unique points of the chateau. And of course you will be in love with this panoramic view as well. Just check this out, it's amazing. In the 20th century, early 20th century, the city became super popular for its shoreline and the resorts that they built. They don't exist anymore because of the wars, but before, people used to come here to treat themselves. They used to swim in, this, in the sea, they used to use this whole natural richness that this city has to heal themselves physically and mentally as well. Some of the practices even included throwing the patient onto the breaking uh, waves and because of the cold and the sudden shock, people felt like they were healed. <laughs> I don't know if it would heal me, but you know, it healed them apparently. And Dieppe was the first shoreline resort city in France. And this is the artwork that was put here in the year 2000 and uh, it basically frames the entire city. It's a really cool experience. It's called Sitting Panoramic. And it's funny because it's, it's in France, but it's called Sitting, so that's a bit interesting. So during the Louis XIV, these buildings behind me were all built at the same time because the centre-ville around the church actually burned down, there was a huge fire and um, the buildings had to be rebuilt but they were rebuilt in a different style, the one that you see here and it kind of has a touch of Parisian type of feel, you know it looks a little bit Parisian, it looks a bit different and um, very homogenic I would say So this is Église Saint-Jacques and it's 800 years old. It's a perfect example of Renaissance Gothic architecture as well. Frankly, it looks like it's fallen apart in some places. It needs, in my opinion, it needs restoration in a lot of bits and pieces, but it seems that they are working on it slowly and surely. This church is one of the most beautiful I've ever seen in my life because it's so detailed. Like you could be standing next to a column that is not just a normal column. It would be like the ti it would just have the tiniest flowers on it and animals and creatures and I don't know what. It is absolutely gorgeous. The fritz, the fries, okay, I believe, I mean, I agree, the mayonnaise was very good, but the issue of the portion, 
in Calais we couldn't finish half of it here it was half of what we had in Calais <laughs> I was very disappointed but I really missed it so I wasn't complaining so much but at the same time because of the portions I wasn't so happy I just love coming to the sea you know it's like a therapy thing you know I always keep on saying that and it's like a regular thing now on our channel whenever we come to the sea I always have to do a little monologue on the beach I love Dieppe so far it's been really nice it's been so calm it's chilled out there are quite a bit of things to see the cliffs are just gorgeous and you know what the best part is not so many tourists so it's really nice and it's not expensive as well we got this amazing Airbnb for like I think it was like 70 ah oh, you can't see my face it was like 75 euros a night with all the charges and everything and it's got a sea view so it's really nice apartment and it's right in the centre ville it's gorgeous here it's absolutely beautiful I love it we're gonna go and discover the other side of the town because the town is basically divided into two by the port but we'll have to do it tomorrow we didn't want to go to the chapel today because it will be closed it's already almost 7 p.m. so the chapel is not going to be open at this time I love this place it's beautiful it's so beautiful I keep on saying that okay it's beautiful they say that the sunsets are gorgeous here as well so hopefully we'll capture that We're queuing to get some food from the boulangerie because we really liked it yesterday. It's a big market, there are so many people here. The queue is huge and the funny thing is that we are standing right next to a grill, chicken grill place, it stinks. And Sinan is like, I'm not breathing, I'm not breathing. <laughs> I love this marché though, the open market is beautiful. You can find anything here, clothes, food, you know, drinks, soaps and stuff like that. It's just amazing. So when you cross the canal and the port, you end up at this side of the city, it's called Le Palais. This is the quartier or the quarter of, uh, of the fishermen. It's the oldest quarter in the city. You know how I told you that um, there was a big fire 
in the 17th century. Uh, this site was actually saved. It didn't happen here. The fire didn't reach here. So the, the buildings actually remained and um, a lot of houses here are very, very old. You go through this area to get to the chapel. It's very beautiful here. So behind me is the Chapelle Notre Dame de Bon Secours. It's the one that looks over everybody else. Uh, you can see it from every point in the city, like when you're on the beach and stuff. And um, frankly, I didn't expect what I saw inside because I had no idea what's inside. And um, this was basically built to help the local seamen who go into the sea for whatever reason, you know, fishing or not, or army or whatever, anything, and uh, to protect them. It was built in the late 19th century, in 1876, I believe it was blessed and opened. And um, the thing that really touched me is that inside it, uh, you see a lot of plaques, like boards that were placed by the families of the victims who have uh, perished in the sea. And uh, there are over, th uh, there are about 1,000 of them, 1,000 of names, and it's a bit you know, it's a little bit serious. It gets serious when you realize that some names have the age of like 17 years old. Some of the victims were 17 and up. And um, yeah, I find it a little bit sad, to be honest. I found, I found it a little bit kind of like, you know, hits you where it shouldn't, you know? <laughs> hits you where it, it feels, you know? So we were just crossing the bridge and the barrier started closing down and we were rushing to make it to on the other side because we have a train to catch. What's crazy to me is that we were just walking literally two minutes ago, we were on it and I saw this thing fall and I'm like, run, 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 run. <laughs> this is called Pont Colbert, so Bridge Colbert. And it's one of the only still functioning mechanical bridges in France. It was built at approximately the same time as the Eiffel Tower, oh, no, although like at the same period, you know, like where the iron was used widely in the country. And um, what's amazing to me is that this bridge still works. It's over a hundred years old, right? Yeah. And it still works and it makes no sound. It was so creepy. We were walking on it. I couldn't hear anything. Yeah, no, because there's a tableau. Yeah, there is the like a signage, right? Yeah, saying when you hear this sound, uh, please evacuate, but we couldn't hear anything. There was no sound. There was no sound. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we thankfully made it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they would just remove if we were on it. I don't think so because there are two towers. So I'm sure there are people watching the tower and watching the bridge. So if someone is on it, they wouldn't move, I believe. I, I hope. Know. time we changed the criteria it turned out to be bigger portion so we are just enjoying this criteria the price with this amazing view <laughs> so I don't need anything else at the moment that's it for today we hope you like this episode don't forget to like, share and comment below. If you like this episode, I'm sure you will also like in this one. Until next week, Awa.